All right, so today we are continuing our in-depth discussion about photosynthesis. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail on the light-dependent reactions. When we first went through this, we kind of just gave you a summary of what happened. So remember, there's a little bit of an overview here. We'll review it and get into some pretty good depth in the next slide. So the overview, light energy is absorbed by chlorophyll in the grana, which remember those are the stacks of thylakoid membranes. Second step, most energy is used for photolysis. Remember photolysis, photolysis means to break apart, and we're breaking apart water in this case using our light energy. So here's the basic reaction. We're taking our water, H2O, and we're breaking it into two hydrogen ions. Remember an ion has a charge to it, and also oxygen. We additionally will get two electrons, which is represented by the E with the dash, if you remember back to physical science, and uh, those are going to enter the electron transport chain. So going back to our hydrogens, the hydrogens are going to attach to what's called a hydrogen carrier. And in this case, it's our NADP plus molecule. When the hydrogen is attached to it, it turns into NADPH. Hydrogens are really going to represent our energy in this case. And this is going to be used in our light independent reactions. They're just going to carry the hydrogens around to create a gradient to help us transfer energy. The oxygen, remember, gets released into the atmosphere through the stomates in the lower epidermis. And we said the electrons are entering the electron transport chain. Third step, we do make a little bit of ATP during these reactions, but the ATP really isn't the main goal of this, and a lot of it is used in the light independent reactions. Remember, that's our second step. So we really can't account for a gain of ATP during this. So let's see what this looks like. I know this looks a little scary at first. These are the details of what's actually happening, happening inside that thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause this slide and I'd like you to write down what you see in this diagram, transfer it. When you write down, I want you to below the diagram create a numbered list, numbered one through eight, in order to list what's happening in each of those eight steps. Copy the diagram down. Write the information for each step on the numbered list once you actually get it all written down and play the video. Have your one through eight, write down what's described for each of those steps. List the products, which if you're pretty slick, you'll notice that those products are pretty well identified for you. And record any questions that you have. Remember, we've left the margin on the right. So as we go through this, we're inside our chloroplast. We have the inner thylakoid membrane here. This is the thylakoid membrane. It's kind of set up like a cell membrane is. And then on this side, we have the stroma, which remember is the liquid portion of our chloroplast. There are two main photosystems in our chemical reaction for photosynthesis. They're labeled photosystem two and photosystem one. Now, it is a little confusing because we start off with photosystem two. So what happens is, as our light comes in, and light is really just in the form of photons, and the light comes in and it excites the electrons in these photosystem two areas, which we could also call P60. As we bring in the light and excite the electrons, two electrons are gonna get transferred over through the electron transport chain to get over to photosystem one. As we're doing this, water is entering and we're splitting water apart. The hydrogens are gonna go onto the inner thylakoid membrane to create a gradient. We've got a lot of pluses on this side. The oxygen is going to the atmosphere, so that's one thing that's getting produced and released. And we're gonna have two electrons come in to replace the two electrons that are leaving. So the first thing we had the light photons coming in and exciting the electrons here in our photosystem too. The second thing we had water coming in and getting split. The hydrogens create the gradient oxygen goes to the atmosphere. So our two electrons travel over through the electron transport chain. We usually abbreviate that ETC. As those two electrons head over, they're actually going to have more light photons come in and excite photosystem one, which sometimes is also called P700. So step four here, we have the light photons exciting photosystem one. More hydrogens are going to come out into this inner thylakoid area and we're gonna transfer two electrons over through the electron transport chain. They're gonna be replaced by the two electrons that came from photosystem two. 
So now we had our photons come in for step four. We had photosystem one getting excited for step five, and then two electrons going through the electron transport chain. They get dumped out onto this side of the thylakoid into the stroma, and now we're going to use that NADPH carrier molecule, and we're going to have NADP join with the, NA the H's to form NADPH. It's considered to be reduced because we added electrons or gained electrons. So we have this gradient here. We had a lot of pluses on this side. We're gonna have electrons on this side. Step eight, those H's now are going to be used in order to transform something called ATP synthase. Remember ASE is gonna tell us that we have an enzyme. So in this case, this is where we're actually creating ATP from ADP. We're adding that, using the energy from the hydrogens in order to add that last phosphorus to ADP to turn it into ATP. It's called photophosphorylation. Phosphorylation, we're adding a P, photo, using the energy from the light, and then it's a process of chemiosmosis, we're using chemicals in this case. We have all of our hydrogens and our enzymes. And that's our last step, the excitement of the ATP synthase. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to make sure you have all of your numbered lists and the information for each of the numbers, identifying the products, and then writing down any questions that you might have for the overall process.